a meeting with the Justice and Security Cluster over campus violence. Let's now go cry, uh, cross live to the presser. The legitimacy of the issues raised by students with regards to access and provision of free quality education for the poor who cannot afford. However, in pursuit of this noble undertaking, the JCPS cluster wishes to emphasize that acts of violence, intimidation, and destruction of property will not be tolerated. It is important to note that government has made great strides towards the realization of this noble ideal of expanding access to higher education to, for students from poor and working class backgrounds. To this end, for the 2017 academic year, government has ensured that poor students who receive assistance from NSFAS, middle class and missing middle, don't pay any fee increase. Students from families with family annual income of up to 600,000 rands will not pay any fee increase. Government has further recommended to universities that the fee increases should not exceed 8%. The subsidy will benefit almost 70% of all undergraduate students in universities and colleges. And in, in some universities, of course, this will cover more than 90% of students. South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, is a constitutional democracy with a comprehensive legislative framework <coughs> that provides, amongst other things, for gathering and protesting <clears throat> in a peaceful and lawful <clears throat> manner. Government recognizes and respects the right to freedom of expression. We would, however, like to warn all protesters that Section 16, Subsection 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa does not extend this right to incitement of imminent violence. We appeal to the leadership of students, parents, and all stakeholders to work together with government to dissuade students from committing acts of criminality that may result in criminal records which may jeopardize their future prospects. Fellow South Africans, <clears throat> the JCPS cluster genuinely believes that the challenges that confront our society in the wake of the hashtag fees must fall protests do not in any way diminish our collective responsibility towards the safety and security of one another. We urge members of the police to always act with maximum restraint and ensure that their conduct is always beyond reproach. We equally appeal to the students to work with our law enforcement agencies in ensuring that these protests are peaceful. The National South African Police Service leadership is today engaging provincial commissioners to firm up plans to secure the protests, the public and private property, students and members of the public generally. We will continue to update our nation on work that government is doing to normalize the situation at institutions of higher learning, thereby allowing for the academic program to continue. End of statement. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, thank you very much. Um, I would like to take a first round of questions. Are there any papers? Please, uh, we know the ritual. Are we coming out? Um, thank you very much, Colin Gandhi from ENCA. Visuals there coming uh, from Police Minister Nkosinati Nsleko just uh, um, addressing the media and uh, he speaks of uh, the protests that have been happening across varsities in the country and how they have become uh, violent. Security clusters um, having been called by President Zuma a couple of days ago and uh, emphasizing that uh, protesting, while it is enshrined in the Constitution, it also comes with uh, responsibility, also asking for united effort from not only the students but parents as well, university management, the government as well as the police um, to make sure that the protests 
terrorists do not become violent and that property is um, is secured. Also, mentioning that he will be in contact with commissioners across all the provinces to make sure that the protests are secure and uh, also warning the students that uh, um, some of the activities and the actions that he has seen in the past couple of days could result in uh, criminal records for the students and it will jeopardize their future. Um, that's the police minister. They're taking questions from the media now. But has that incident, or could that incident perhaps uh, cause you to maybe apologize for, for, for what has happened there? And just lastly, therefore, we saw at the University of Johannesburg security guards, private security, really overreaching in as far as their mandate is concerned. Um, where does the law, or what does the law say in as far as how private security in the country should handle themselves? We note, of course, that the university has apologized for that incident, but from the law enforcement side of things, what are the parameters <coughs> for private security? Thank you, Claudia Christopher. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Chris Alder Lewis from SABC Television. I don't see anything in the statement pertaining to what exactly are the plans that are being put, place, uh, put in place at this juncture. Are you planning to beef up uh, a, 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 a police uh, within these institutions? Because as far as we understand, students are saying that they're going to continue uh, with their protest action. And the second question uh, very much relates to what Colin Gandhi said uh, with regard to <coughs> private security. Is there any talks perhaps that are being held at the stage to try and outline the role of these security uh, personnel uh, within these various institutions? Because the sense that we're getting is that uh, the security agents at these universities, employed by the universities, are sort of agitating the situation on this because students feel that they are being intimidated on premises of higher learning. Thank you, Griselda. Any taker? Minister. Uh, now, thank you very much, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> the South African Police Service, in executing its duty in enforcing the law, has got to be always guided by, firstly, our constitution, the limitations that are explic expressly contained today in section 16, subsection 2, which basically <clears throat> does recognize, yes, the right for any one of us to protest, but then, of course, a, a within certain boundaries and limitations. And, of course, the question of the <coughs> responsibility having got to be taken around that. Now, but also far and beyond just what the Constitution says, you have other pieces of legislation, for instance, that speaks you know, directly to the issue of uh, issues uh, such as intimidation, amongst other things. Uh, <clears throat> the one I can think of uh, right away is the Righteous uh, and Gatherings Act, uh, uh, amongst other things, which also speak to the issue of how we need to conduct ourselves uh, when, uh, when, when it comes to issues of public protest, issues of intimidation, incitement, and so on and so it goes. So we'll be firmly guided by, <coughs> uh, by such. The incident at Rhodes is quite, was quite an unfortunate incident. Of course, we need to still gather the, all the necessary facts in terms of what a, <clears throat> essentially transpired in, in that particular situation. And it is for that reason also that in the statement, we are making two a, a particular points a, almost equally. The first one is that <clears throat> the manner in which we have got to act as the police service, for instance, we need to act within the context of the law, but also with restraint. But the second one is that, of course, <clears throat> there is also a duty from the side of ordinary citizens of the country, any one of us, to actually obey the law at all material times. And we must be able to respect uh, the law. So <clears throat> that's why we're making a, that particular point. The issue of private security, I would like to lump the very same question that uh, Mr. Mugambi raised uh, with uh, uh, Ms. Lewis here on the question of the private uh, security <coughs> uh, companies. Uh, that, of course, there will be engagement with university <coughs> management or leadership, let me put it that way. 
<coughs> to because the issue also amongst ourselves, which it co concerns us as the South African Police Service, is the whole question of the management of the security situation within institutions. And there has got to be engagement at, at that particular level so that we're able to, 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 to uh, uh, firstly, to have effective means and measures of coordination in managing uh, security situations and concerns within uh, uh, <coughs> campuses and so on. Um, now, the, you, you speak to plans. Of course, I think it would be appreciated that the only thing <coughs> that we can say thus far is that we will enforce the law. Now, but if, if you are looking for operational details, that's what we're not going to give you, uh, except to say that, uh, of course, we'll have to do that. And of course, amongst other things, uh, perhaps I can also throw this one in, uh, is that <coughs> where there is a need for us to beef up security in institutions, we'll certainly do so uh, to try and contain the situation. Where we have got to, uh, to, 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 to employ and deploy some other measures, of course, uh, to essentially amplify the work that uh, the South African Police Service uh, has got to, to undertake, uh, we will certainly do so. I've heard of the, of the allegation, which of course, uh, it being an allegation, it has got to be subjected to other processes, I suppose, at, uh, at a later point. <clears throat> that private security companies are also uh, alleged to be agitating. That's the point that, that you're making. So it's not the first time that I hear of that particular point. Um, but if you are expecting me to say uh, that is true or not true, certainly I'm not going to be able to satisfy that and be able to say that. But uh, safe to say that it's, a, it's indeed a matter that requires following up as well through different sort of means and channels to establish uh, some validity around this particular claim or, or none thereof, mm -hmm. uh, sort of. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, second round, uh, one, two, come, uh, come again. Yes, Judith, continue. Minister, just on um, the issue of um, going back to the issue of roles, would you say that police are actually properly trained to be able to handle protests? Because this one has become like an echo in these things that are happening whenever there's a protest. Would you say that police are properly trained? Let me take, uh, before I close, there was a, okay, gentlemen here, yeah, please say, state your name and your um, institution. I see that you've also, the student leaders here, have not resolved to stop the current process going on in institutions. This university recently held a poll, 70 something percent of the students voted to go back to, to, to class. Some are saying they will continue their process. What's the overall discussion with the various student leaders here? Are you asking them to halt the protest, or are they adamant that they're carrying on with the protest since they're here? And the lastly, Minister Nzamande, what is happening with the call for free quality higher education? Are you addressing the issue? And when is the time frame that the students are demanding that free quality higher education? Are you going to implement it? Because in my understanding, the students are not calling for a no fee increase. They are calling for the implementation of free quality higher education. We understand that the fees commission is going on, but when are you addressing the time frames and the time issues that they are calling for? And, not, and the last question to the students leaders here, are you truly in control of the students who are protesting, or are you just an elite leadership that is not addressing your core members on the ground? You've seen other leaders like Mr. Jamini say, you guys are not presenting them. Is that true? Thank you. Thanks, Jacaranda. That was a mouthful. Thank you. Um, CB Madia from News24. Thanks for taking my question. Um, just to very quick questions. One is for the Minister of Intelligence, just wanted to get the role of intelligence. Quite often the intelligence community is criticized for being reactive and, and not seeing things before they happen. Very often adversity has been taught, schools and the likes. I just wanted to know if there is a role in this particular issue. Secondly, for the student 
it's almost in line with what some kind of just asked now. Other concerns that going back from here, you'll be rejected because you're here to meet with government. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'll allow the ministers to respond and then I'll take Griselda and Paul as the last. Mm -hmm. Are you could I? No, we can, we can get to this. Um, let, let, me, let me just say that the that I think with regards to two other questions and, and probably more, I'll ask uh, uh, both the Minister Zaman and the Minister Maslobo to, to, to come in. But there's only one question I need to deal with, the question of police training. Firstly, just maybe two things about that. If, if, if that question is premised on what happened at Rhodes, <coughs> it is also likely that that could be a wrong premise because uh, we still have got to interrogate all the facts in terms of what actually transpired there besides what we see on, uh, on, on, on videos and, and what has been flighted right, at, right across. <clears throat> so that's one part. The second part is that the protests as we have them now in 2016, it's, 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 it's not just simply if, you know, the, the first time we're experiencing a protest of this nature. There have been protests in the past, and <clears throat> the South African Police Service manages, on average basis, about a thousand of public protests a month in this country. Now, <clears throat> so the question would be that, or maybe not even the question, but perhaps the observation is simply that in the majority of all these particular protests, be it whether is it student protests or public protests and so forth, post Manikana, I think you will probably agree with me that the police have acted with restraint in the majority of these particular protests. We haven't experienced any fatalities, we haven't experienced any serious injuries for, the, for an example and so on. So, and I think it's a point uh, to be reckoned with and, <clears throat> uh, and somewhat uh, recognized. So that's an effort. Now the question of police training <coughs> Those of you who were involved with training of any sort, be it in the, whether is it police training or any form of training, you, you, you would appreciate that training in itself is, tends to be an evolving kind of program, if I can loosely put it, put it, put it across in that sort of manner. Um, <clears throat> so in a sense, we, are, we continue as the South African Police Service, for instance, to look at, you know, refining our methods of training. Uh, related to that will also be the question of uh, periods of training and, 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 and so it goes. And those of you who have been following some of the developments and the trends in the South African Police Service, you will remember that <clears throat> we even now have bought a project in place uh, which is established on the basis of the Marikana Commission of Inquiry recommendations to also begin to look at reviewing some of our, uh, of our issues, be it the question of methods of training, the question of standing orders and so on, that govern uh, the work of public order policing and so on. So I would venture to say to see the, the, the question of public order policing and relevant uh, police training is work in progress. Thank you very much.